Well, good evening, good evening. How are we all? If I said hello to you uh, pre-show in the little five minutes beforehand, then hello. If I didn't, hello. Uh, <laughs> it's Tuesday night uh, and it's, um, it's a strange one tonight. So I say strange, uh, it's different um, because tonight you're seeing the show for the first time in HD 720, but also for the first time it's being streamed via 4G through the marvels of 4G uh, and as I said pre-show it's coming out of my phone <laughs> um, so it's um, it's yeah it's weird um, I've got loads of news stories that have been coming around today I've got a bit of VT we've got the final bit of the penguin mod build from Mark Jones that'll be in part two uh, and um, yeah I've just got a load of icons on my screen there with uh, different stories on uh, which will start in a minute, you know. So, um, yes, hello chat. I'm just uh, reloading there. It's, uh, oh, there it is. Yes, it's all good. Hopefully, my stream will stay okay. Um, if it happens to go down, we'll come back on broadband. Um, but up until then, we're going to crack on with the show. It is Vapor Scene, and you're watching VaporTrolls.tv. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. Yes, it is Tuesday. You are watching Vapor Scene on VaporTrails.tv and I just noticed there in chat someone said my audio was a bit quiet. Uh, John T, is that any better, John T? Because I've given it a little bit of volume for you. Yep, maybe. Possibly, yeah. Right, so it is Tuesday the 4th of March today uh, and there's a stack of people over in uh, Belgium because tomorrow they're going to the European Parliament uh, no, it's not. It's not a nicotine test. Someone just said in chat. Uh, no entropy. I'm not doing a nicotine test tonight. Um, I can do one for you next week if you would like. Uh, let me know. Um, there is something going on in um, Europe tomorrow in the Parliament. Um, Nikki Sinclair has taken a coachload of vapors, uh, and here are a few pictures that have been coming out today. Yes, they are waiting there in uh, Birmingham for the coach. Uh, there's some. Uh, Enterprising people doing what you need to do, vaping and getting a Starbucks. Joy, deep joy. Um, but then uh, Dave tweeted this earlier, Dave Kitson from the very own VTTV. Apparently can't vape on coach. I beg to differ. <laughs> now we were all lamenting in our Skype chat whether or not that would uh, start another incident on the motorway <laughs> or not. Uh, and I'm not sure whether they've been able to vape all the way uh, or not. Um, but um, yes, I'm sure we will find out. And Dave did say if he uh, managed to get Wi-Fi, you might Skype in. So we'll see what happens there, won't we? We'll see what happens. Um, what else can I tell you? Yes, let's go to the, uh, the EFVI. Now, you've been hearing this for a while now um, from the shows about the European Free Vaping Initiative and it's something that we really need to go and I know that we've all been preaching to the converted really because um, everyone out there that watches the show um, and especially those in chat have probably already signed this um, but you really do need to go over uh, and get your friends to go over and click on the green rectangle and start the procedure which then takes you to this page and allows you to register your support uh, and as many people as possible we need as many people as possible uh, and Dave not Dave Daz from Safer Sigs tweeted this earlier he's just ordered thousands of these and they will be included in every order that goes out and what he's ordered are these so every 
order that goes out from DAS at Safer Sigs, we'll be getting one of these. It's got a little scan QR code on it. It's got all the information on, which is fantastic. And I really hope that all the other vendors uh, and all the other vendors worth their salt do the same thing. Um, and also, I've got too many icons now. I've got too many things to look at. Um, yeah, also, Gary Dibley has posted on UK Vapors. And when I find that post, uh, there it is. Um, he has put a little draw together. Um, and he's going to run a prize draw for a month. Uh, and you can see there what is on offer. The 2018 650 table dog mod, picks to come. A set of Gary Dibley stainless steel tips, which are fantastic, by the way. Uh, a custom hand term tip in your choice of colour and design-ish. A Gary Dibley twin 18650 verbal voltage tin mod. 30 mils of TD's home blend custard juice. Mmm. Cell vapor baby old silver DNA mod. A uh, total liquid £100 store voucher and £100 cash and totally liquid. And £100 store voucher from Cloud9. So some good stuff there. And all you've got to do is follow the link to the EFVI site and sign up and then post your um, metal identifier in the thread. And Gary will use a randomizer and he will pull someone out of the hat uh, to win that. So it costs you nothing. You don't have to buy a ticket, you don't have to use a stamp. All you've got to do is use your mouse, use your keyboard, go and lend your support uh, and then post it into that thread. Um, so yes, worth doing, don't you think? Yeah, even it's, not, it's worth doing anyway, but even more so when there's some free stuff on offer. Um, now then, what else can I tell you? Yes, now, we saw on the Haze Hour on the 24th, uh, Dave went and purchased the Puritane e-cig from Boots. And it was uh, 8.99, was it, for the disposable and 23 quid for the kit? Well, I was in Asda last week and I saw these on the uh, aisle where they have the nicotine patches uh, and uh, the other things above it, lubricants and such, uh, and aspirins and all kind of things. But I saw the pricing. Look at the pricing. £3.25 for a disposable. And it's not actually a disposable, it's a rechargeable. And £3.25 for the charger. So £6.50 for one rechargeable SIG alike with one atomizer attached, as opposed to um, eight quid for a disposable. Are we seeing a price war here, do you think? Now, the, the cartridges, the boxes of cartridges were the same price, around about seven quid, uh, which is cheaper than the Puritane ones. Um, so I bought one and it's here. I bought one of the Siggies and I bought one of the USB chargers, so £6.50. Uh, and what I thought I'd do uh, is this. Marco's Sigger Like Challenge. Yeah, I'm going to challenge myself this week. From tomorrow morning, I'm only going to use this. Now, I have to tell you, it is a 20 milligram strength. So it's not bad. Um, it's not 24, which I'm used to, um, but it's 20. So I'm going to use this for the next few days. Uh, I might even try a week if I can get some juice into the end, because I didn't buy any extra cartridges. But it looks like I can put some juice in it. I need to be careful because of the air valve, um, but I will see how I go on with that. So tonight I'm going to vape loads of 24 <laughs> and then tomorrow morning when I get in the car to Manchester I'm going to start using this and I will take something else with me just in case it fails because uh, I'm not that stupid um, but I'm going to see how long I can last on it um, and that will give a good indication uh, on um, what it will be like if that's all you could get. Um, as we know that 20 milligram is probably going to be the, the top strength. So that's Marco's cigar-like challenge uh, which I will start tomorrow. Looking forward to it? Mm, yeah I suppose. It's all good stuff. Give me some VT for next week won't it because I'll put the video um, the video thingy, the video camera in the car tomorrow uh, and I'll film myself getting road rage on the M62 uh, which is quite likely to be honest. Um, so there you go.
So that is the Elite uh, signal like challenge that I'm going to be doing. Um, what else have we got? Yes. Let's go to what I found on the Lancet uh, this morning. This was on, uh, I get an email because I'm subscribed to the Lancet uh, and this came through. Uh, it's the oncology side. Uh, and there are some spurious things happening in there. A notable proportion of individuals, if you look about halfway, third of the way down, uh, a notable proportion of individuals might be at risk of nicotine addiction from e-cigarettes alone. Even at this early stage of their take-up, as more young people are drawn to e-cigarettes, product design, promotional activities, associated safety claims and cheap price, the number will only increase. Many flavours of e-cigarettes are available and they are marketed with several colours by celebrities on the internet and through social media, which leaves little doubt about the age group it is being, that is being targeted. The numbers of users will also grow as e-cigarettes popularity increases in young people uh, as a result of peer influence. And it goes on on the next bit. Uh, Pelosa and Caponetto are mindful of the risks of individuals developing a nicotine addiction through e-cigarette use, but at the same time realise that e-cigarettes need to, need to complete, compete with traditional cigarettes, so those who can benefit will use them. To try and reconcile these conflicting needs, the call for strict regulations of e-cigarettes for young people, e.g. with restriction of sales and marketing, be relaxed for adults. And it goes on. Um, and the last paragraph there, their final implicit assumption is that somehow a for-profit industry will follow a public health agenda, voluntarily or through regulations, and target only adult smokers who find it hard to quit, even if this approach runs against its business model. Remains to be seen, doesn't it? Remains to be seen. Uh, and there's some more from The Lancet uh, in part two. Uh, I've got some more from Lancet. I've also got something from Wigan Today that Matt Gluggles tweeted earlier on. Um, but what we'll do is we'll go to the break. Um, when we come back, we'll have those. We'll have uh, some other stuff too. I'll see you in two minutes. Vapocene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Now it's back to Vaporscene on Vaportrails TV. Vaporscene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.
and welcome back indeed to part two. I was just looking at chat there during the um, during the ads uh, and a couple of people have mentioned about the e-lights. Is it 510? It's not. It's slightly different. Um, but someone else, Dream Vapor, has said he started in e-lights and you can refill them as long as you don't run it dry. So that's thing to, something to bear in mind tomorrow. Uh, I'll be taking this with me, which uh, I made this week um, with my needle tip, so I can refill it. It's uh, caramel, hazelnut, dolce leche, and I've got it in here, and it's lush. Um, and it's 24, so it's good. Uh, and yes, I do have lots of USB available in the car, <laughs> and fell in that laptop. Um, and someone else has put, where is it now? I'm just trying to find it. Uh, dream again, yes, 510 cartos fit the e-lights, although the thread pitch is out slightly. Yeah, and I've found that already, have looked at that. I didn't want to cross-thread it though. So um, I'll probably just, just keep topping it up during the day as opposed to trying to get something in it that is not supposed to go in it. Uh, and I don't really want to buy the extra cartridges if I can avoid it really, seeing as I've got gallons of juice. Um, so yes. Now then, what else? Uh, yes, before I move on, tonight, 10.30, BBC Two, there is a programme on and it's got uh, Viscount Lord Ridley on it. So tune into that because it's going to be interesting, going to be interesting. And thanks to uh, Whip for uh, passing that across in, um, in a Skype chat. So let's look at the other Lancet story, uh, which is this one. Yeah, the European Union adds teeth to its anti-tobacco legislation. And I'm not going to go through the first page. I'll go to the second page, um, which has got the bit about e-cigs. Um, and there it is. On e-cigs, one contentious issue is how to regulate e-cigarettes. Under the new directive, e-cigarettes will be regulated as a consumer product and must comply with the same advertising and packaging restrictions as regular tobacco products why we know they must not contain nicotine in a concentration of more than 20 milligrams per milliliter member states however can classify them as medicinal products but have to prove that they have to help or cure or prevent tobacco addiction uh, and christina marastender program manager of the world trade organization tobacco control program says uh, what worries us about e-cigarettes is the major tobacco companies are busily buying up cigarette e-cigarette manufacturers in order to enter the e-cigarette market. Really? You think? You think they wouldn't? <laughs> uh, the rest of it is there. Uh, it's been tweeted today, so I, I implore you to go and have a, a full read of the entire text. Um, but yes, it was inevitable anyway that um, Big Pharma and Big Tobacco would get involved in some way uh, and they're going to milk it for all it's worth until that date and then try to milk it after that um, and we know that, we know that. Uh, the last bit though, the final step in the arduous journey of this directive will be its submission on March the 14th to the European Council. It will enter into force shortly afterwards and member states will have two years to incorporate into their national laws. When it's all said and done, the new directive, like many compromises, is not perfect. In the view of most public health advise, uh, observers, it is likely to reduce tobacco consumption in Europe. It will not, however, end the battle between the forces of health and those of wealth. And I've just had in my uh, Skype chat there that uh, my volume is a bit low on there. I do apologise. Uh, I need to set those up again, I think. Um, yes. It is, isn't it? Health versus wealth. Who makes the money? Does Big Tobacco make it? Does Big Pharma make it? It's a conundrum. So it is. Um, and a final story today then is uh, something that Matt Gluggles tweeted earlier uh, from Wigan Today. The EU sets new rules for e-cig users. Uh, and uh, I'll just turn my volume up slightly. Wigan officials are back in the European Parliament's ruling to ensure electronic cigarettes are widely available. Uh, and uh, Chris Davis is mentioned here. Mr Davis claims that the new rules bring e-cigs into the mainstream, saying this is a compromise that won't please everyone. 
but it's a huge improvement on an alternative of an e-cig ban that was threatened in some countries. We don't yet know the long-term consequences of using e-cigs, but it must be likely that they are, will be healthier than tobacco we know is so damaging. But Wigan Council also supports the ruling as it will go some way to helping people quit smoking. Now my question is, what are Wigan Council going to do? Are they then going to say you can't vape in public or you can't vape here, you can't vape there, when it is still legal to do so? Um, and if it's going to be legal to smoke, it should be legal to vape outside in public. So we'll see what happens with that. We'll see what happens as we go on. Uh, and um, finally, here we go. Now then, this was tweeted earlier on. Friday, March the 7th at 8 p.m. EST. Um, don't miss our special guests, Dave Dawn, UK, and David Sweener, Canada. And you can see what it says there. Dave Dawn, leading e-cig advocate in the UK and host of Vape Charles TV, will bring us up to speed on what's happening in the EU with the recent TPD vote and help us explore what Canadians looking to save e-cigs can learn from European experience. Dave Sweeney, an experienced lawyer, public health advocate and e-cig supporter, will share his insider's look into the public policy development and discuss how Canadian efforts to save vaping can better succeed. And a huge thank you in advance to our guests for making themselves available. Um, so um, the address is on there, soundcloud.com vp-live. Tune in and uh, listen, and I'm sure we might, well, I'm, I'm not sure, we might be able <laughs> to restream it, I don't know. Um, I'm sure Dave can mention that on Thursday's show. Okay, enough of all that. Let's have some penguin fun. Uh, and uh, we're going to look at Mr. Jones and the third part of his penguin mod build. Uh, and it looks rather nice at the end, because I've seen this a few times now. I hope you enjoy. Vapor scene does. Tin your tip. Tin your tip. So I'll make it out. I'm going to solder the wires to this side of the board as they are rather close to the flex connector for the display. And we all know my track board with flex connectors. So, so the all tinned up. Here to have put the solder point underneath the flex connector. This is going to be awkward. Looking at it, I think I'm going to have to just snip off the wire and solder to this side of the board. I'm 
reason why it's tinned up. The more wires I connect up on this, the harder it gets to move the board around. negative for the atomizer is just a little bit too short so I'm going to have to adjust that back when I'm finished. Alright I've soldered all the wires on and because this wire from the atomizer was too short I've spliced in an extra piece and just covered it with some heat shrink tubing. It's not perfect. Yeah, it'd be better to replace the whole wire but as it's fixed in place that would be way too much work and possibly not even possible to dig all that epoxy out. So basically it's finished apart from adding some epoxy to hold this in place. Before I do that I need to test that the thing actually works. So if I pop in a battery Right there, you can see the display is working nicely. Uh, on this model, you have to hold down the down button, which is not going to be so easy to do when it's not fixed in place. And the voltage appears, and you can move up and down through the voltage. Whenever you re reinstall the battery, it defaults to 3 volts, but it's no major thing. This will run from 3 to 6 volts. As I say, you can switch it on and off, no problem. Get the number of clicks right. So, See that you can also, once you're on that, if you hold down the negative again, it will tell you the time that you've been vaping on it. You can set the date and time through menu system. I'm 
come back to the village. That's at four and a half volts. We'll pop the lid on, there's a finished device. I suppose I better add the button. And I've got nothing. Hmm. Short somewhere. Well, that'll be fixed when it's glued in place. That, that's working fine. I'll pop back once I've set this all in place. So here you have it, final penguin mod. This click button on the back, easy to use. Simple to take apart. And the display, I've now set it so it's reading 6 volts. If I hold it down again, it's 0 minutes. And there's the date and time, just in case you really need it. Max the voltage. Stick uh, that the on. All I did was added a lump of epoxy underneath and just mounted this board up here so it's not too far down inside so you can easily access the buttons. Pop the lid back on, it doesn't interfere with it being angled, it doesn't interfere with the lip so you can put anything you want on here. And it fits rather well. So that's it. And it's back to me. Hello. Did not look good in the end. Yes, yeah, three weeks in the making, sort of. Um, but yeah, looks really good. And thank you to Mark Jones for uh, giving me that video to play out while Tin Your Tip has been off the air. And you'd be pleased to know that Tin Your Tip will be coming back soon. Oh yes, very soon indeed. Um, so keep an eye out on all the relevant places, the Facebook page, the vape TV forum, and of course on Twitter. And we'll let you know. And of course on the shows too. Um, now something else that somebody asked me to, <laughs> we, um, to say afterwards was, um, tomorrow night, yes, tomorrow night on Team Talk, they're going to try out the new method that we have been using for the past few shows. Um, so it's going to be like a little test show to see how things are running. Um, I sh hope you all agree that the uh, the quality is fantastic on this new streaming service that uh, we've been using. Uh, and uh, it's allowed me to come out in 720 with the addition, of course, of my phone. And I won't give you the brand, um, but it's 4G. <laughs> yes. So I have got another VT, um, which is seven minutes long if you would like to see it. Um, it's the part two of my kind of nano EVOD cotton wool um, re-wick. <laughs> um, would you like to see it? Shall I put it on? Let me know in chat. Go on, I'll give you 10 seconds. Otherwise I'm going. <laughs> no one's saying anything. Uh, Oh, I'm going to put it on anyway. Right, here we go. Uh, I can't find it now. There it is. Okay, so this is part two of the nano coil um, I did a few weeks ago now because it was going to be the next week, but then I got other stuff to do. Um, so it's been put off and put off. Um, but have a look, enjoy, um, and I'll tell you how it ended up at the end. <laughs> See you in a minute. You know, I'll take these apart by now. And if you don't, this is how you do it. Let me just zoom out slightly. Here we go. Pair of pliers, 
gentle, gentle, because we don't want to bend anything. We just want to tease it off. Um, and this will just prise out. I'm being quite gentle here, so I don't do it. I don't break it. So there you can see there's a silicon ring there, which we want to keep. And you can see that on the top of there, there was some extra fibre to stop that from spitting. And that's a brand new coil. Um, but like I said, I wanted to use a new one so you could see exactly what I was doing. Um, and then it's just a case of removing this centre pin. So the pin comes out. Then you need to take out the silicon bung here and you can do it with your fingers it's not difficult just tease that out there you go and then you can simply lift out the coil that was there already and there you can see it i'll keep that as a spare let's put that over there so now we're left with the holder uh, and this silicon ring just came off the top, so this goes over like that. So then when it's actually installed it doesn't leak. And now we have our coil. We can just insert the two tails through the middle. And the needle is keeping the coil in the right place, as you can see. But what we need to do is we need to keep it so it's just at the right height without impeding here where we put it back on. Uh, and we have a pole that goes through the middle and one that goes to the side. And then it's simply a case of putting our silicon plastic bung back in. Now as these get older they do get burned and they do wear out um, so you will get splits and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to use a new one. So we've got one tail on the outside of the bung and we've got one tail on the inside. We're then going to put the pin, the centre pin, back in so it traps the other tail in between the bung and the pin. And there we have that done. And now we just need to trim the tails. But before we do, let's just see that this is lined up nicely, which it is. I just want to finagle this a little bit and push it down. It might even be a case of just getting it a little bit damp. And it's all pointing in the right direction, so that's fine. So now we can take out the needle, and there we have it. Final thing that I want to do is just use a piece of 0.6 silica wick. I'm just going to wet the end, a bit like threading a needle. You will find that this will fit quite nicely as long as you've got your hole clear. Um, he says, and you can just see there, if you look very closely you can just see the, the hole in the middle of the coil. So this does take a little bit of practice but once you've got it in you just twist in the direction of the thread if you twist in the opposite direction it'll fall apart so you need to twist in the direction that it's going and just push it through and you'll see I'll just clear the other end of there we go. This will start coming out, and in fact, 
I could have probably put this a little bit higher up. So I'll just finagle that slightly. There we go. It's a lot easier when you're not doing it on camera. Um, and it's a lot easier when you're doing it yourself. There you go. And we can probably just hold in one side down with your finger. And not forgetting to turn off the sound on your mobile phone so it doesn't interrupt. <laughs> um, just trim that ever so slightly. Repair pair of nail clippers. And these are new ones that aren't used for anything else. <laughs> so there we go. We'll just remove the excess from these tails with our handy clippers. One side and the other. Right, and then we can put the assembly back in. To the unit that fits into the atty. And then what we can do is we can test the resistance. And I'll do that by putting it on the VTR with the little extension tube. Just see. And that's given us a resistance of 1.5 ohms. So that's 10 wraps of the 0.28. So it's a reasonably low resistance. Right, we can put a lot back together uh, and we can put some juice in uh, an EVOD and then um, see how it vapes back in the studio. That was painful watching it again <laughs> because I have to say when I put it all back together and I put juice in it, it was dire, absolutely dire. Wrapping cotton wool around the coil is not the way to do it. Um, I thought I'd try it and it didn't really work. It was just ugh, too much juice in there. Um, so I recoiled it. I didn't recall it. I re-wicked it and just used some cotton in the middle uh, and it was fine. But I haven't got it here. <laughs> it's in the other room. Um, but yeah, um, you know, we try these things so you don't have to. Uh, it wasn't cracking and I certainly wouldn't uh, wrap the cotton wool around the coil again. No, not good at all. <laughs> Anyway, it would have been a bit better if you had that the week after the first bit went out and then you'd have known exactly what had happened the week before. Yeah, would you? Yeah. Um, but I digress. Anyway, it's nearly quarter two. So uh, I'm going to bring it to a close tonight. Um, don't forget tomorrow night it is Team Talk and they're going to be testing the new broadcast system, uh, as I said a little bit earlier on. Thursday it's the Haze Hour, uh, and not the Haze Hour, it's the VT Talk getting mixed up with the days that used to be and now they've changed a little bit yes thursday's vt talk uh, with dave and sav and um guests maybe i'm not quite sure um, i'm sure you can find out tomorrow night on uh, team talk sunday it's dave tackle box with dave kitson and more than likely mr dave dawn um who will then be back on monday for the haze hour with keith if he's not off on his organ uh, I'll be back next Tuesday, so uh, until then my friends, have a good week and I'll see you soon. Tati bye. is proudly sponsored by Health Evade, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. <laughs>